In this video, you're going to learn the basic principles of how to create and navigate through a design system. Now, this is one of the most advanced topics and you, I could create an entire course on a design system, but I just want to give you the basic principles so that you can understand and learn how to actually create a design system, no matter how simple or how complex. And I'm also going to leave some uh, uh, theory knowledge in the, in the next videos. And I'm also giving you a freebie, which is uh, my design system, which I created over the many years that I've been working with, uh, especially corporate and uh, um, large clients. And basically, I'm going to teach you how to create a design system. Now, first of all, let's talk about how, like, what is a design system. And uh, a design system is basically a collection of reusable components guided by clear standards that can be assembled together to build uh, any number of applications. And uh, usually, practically speaking, this would be uh, elements such as uh, typography, color styles, and uh, even things like uh, uh, shadows and uh, components and uh, UI elements, all sorts of different things. Now, I'm going to discuss uh, Initio, which is basically a design system which you can uh, uh, have a look at in the source file of uh, the video where I'm going through all of the basics of Initio. So uh, you're going to learn all about it. But as you can see on the very left, uh, this design system has uh, color styles, has components and the states. Uh, it also has grids uh, and uh, also things uh, like uh, icons, models and pop-ups, textiles, and uh, symbols. Now, the most important elements of a design system uh, are the symbols, which we already discussed in one of the previous videos, the textiles, and the color styles, which we're going to discuss uh, in this video. So let's go ahead, and uh, I just created a blank uh, document, uh, and now I'm going to add uh, a element, uh, and uh, on this element, I'm going to create uh, to text. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, maybe add a, a little bit of a drop shadow over here. And uh, let's go ahead and start uh, and start creating uh, this uh, very first element so that you can see these principles uh, live. So let's get on and create this radius. And uh, I'm going to, to simply duplicate this. And by the way, let me go ahead and turn on the keyboard viewer since we started working on in sketch and uh, by doing that you can see exactly each and every keyboard uh, that uh, basically I'm uh, and all of the keys so let's go ahead over here and let's create this uh, this oval and uh, I'm going to go ahead on the fill make the fill uh, different maybe you can use a uh, a specific color. Let's go ahead and remove the shadow. And also let's start adding some text. Now by default, the this text is white. So I'm just going to use a, a different color. Let's make it around these lines. And I'm going to use this uh, um, headline over here. And uh, let's make this one regular. And let's make it smaller, just like this. All right, perfect. So the very first principle that uh, I want to teach you when it comes to the design systems is the textiles. So the way textiles work in Sketch is basically you can save a specific textile. So basically all of the elements which you see here on the right, so the font family, the font weight, uh, even the characters, all of these uh, um, settings over here can be registered in one single textile. So the way you do it is you click on create. And as you can see, now a new textile has been created. So I'm going to rename this uh, heading and uh, I'm going to press enter. And uh, here we go. We have our very first textile. So as you can see, this is the text that we just created. And uh, if I just move uh, this one a little bit on the left, uh, you can see that uh, on this document, we only have this one textile. 
Now, if I go ahead here and I write, uh, for example, paragraph, and I can start writing some, uh, some gibberish text, and uh, I go ahead here and I create this, uh, this new paragraph text style, you can see that basically it's catching up the name of the layer. So this is something which uh, can be useful, especially if you're setting up uh, multiple textiles at the same time. You can simply like rename the layers over here and then you can update uh, the uh, element right here, or you can simply rename it directly from uh, this edit mode. So I'm going to press enter again. And as you can see, I just created two textiles. So basically I have the heading and I have the paragraphs in this document. And uh, the really cool thing is that uh, now, if, for example, I want to create, uh, um, I want to start typing uh, and uh, just create a new text style somewhere else. Uh, and uh, I go over here while well, this is selected, I click on heading. And basically this uh, text, which I just, just created, is going to adopt uh, the same text styles as the heading. So this is really useful and uh, it enables you to have a level of consistency throughout your design file, which is uh, quite remarkable. So, and the best thing has yet to come because uh, I haven't shown you this, but uh, if you go over here and for example, you decide that, you know, in your 100 screen project, in your screen with, in your project with 100 screens, you just decided that you want to change maybe like the font uh, or you want to change the color of one of these, the text styles. I can simply go over here, change the color on one, and then I can click on update. And basically all the, of the text styles are going to update in a matter of seconds or if it's a very large file in a matter of minutes. So you can understand the power of a design system, especially if you're doing a rebranding or you want to do major changes in your design file. This can be really, really huge. So this is a, um, a great way to structure the, the naming. However, let's say that uh, we have uh, two type of headlines. The first headline is uh, uh, black, so we have this, uh, this very bold style, and the second one is a light headline. So the, the way you would do it is uh, you basically need to, to use a slash and then use the font uh, um, weight. So basically, if I go over here and uh, let's say that I want to simply uh, detach from this, let's say that we want to create a, a headline two, and uh, it's going to be headline two as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and create headline two slash black. I'm simply going to copy this, and uh, as you can see now we have this uh, this headline two on uh, the textiles over here, and uh, if I move it just a little bit more on the left. You can see that now, as I use this slash, I'm going to have this extra uh, column. So basically, if I go ahead here and for this one, I create a new text style and uh, I use the slash and then I, I click on light. You can see that as I go down in uh, the document text styles, you can see that I have a heading two in both black and light version. So this is going to enable you to create uh, all sorts uh, of different uh, organization in the textiles. So this is going to keep uh, your files more clean and uh, just easier to navigate. So this is pretty much it when it comes to textiles. Another thing that uh, you can um, uh, consider doing is if you don't want uh, a specific textile anymore, uh, to be associated with, with a text, you can detach the style. So as you can see, this is uh, not uh, part of the textile system anymore. So you can do anything that you want with uh, this uh, text really. You can also go on the top left uh, under components, click on textiles. As you can see, you're going to, to find all of the textiles. You can also drag and drop a textile directly onto the sketch file. 
so this is going to be really useful and uh, now we're going to talk about uh, the layer styles for the colors now let's uh, re let's go ahead and uh, let's create uh, two elements and uh, i'm going to use another color for this example so let's pretend that this blue color is the primary brand color of a company um, that we're working on Let, let's go ahead here and we can click on the create again and uh, basically uh, just type in blue and i'm going to write primary and uh, as you can see this blue is now registered and again very similar to how the text style works uh, basically we have uh, the all of the layer styles in this document so if you go ahead here and we create uh, um, a red uh, secondary color you can see that uh, basically we have uh, both uh, the blue and the red uh, in colors inside this document and uh, the same uh, is true for um, also the hierarchy which which we created just a moment ago so if for example we go ahead here and uh, we create uh, a third color which is uh, green and uh, i'm just going to duplicate this the screen color and we make it a little bit lighter um, i can go ahead over here and create a green slash uh, um, I'm going to call it fill since uh, it's uh, fully filled and uh, I'm going to go ahead here create a green slash light since this is a lighter version of uh, the screen color as you can see if I go in in this document you can see that we have the blue primary red secondary then we have the screen which is either in uh, fill or light so basically we created this extra column now, similarly to what uh, we have as a uh, menu options for the text styles, you can go over here for the layer styles and we can see all of uh, our options over here. You can also click on this arrow in order to compress uh, or expand uh, this uh, drop down. So this is pretty much it when it comes to the basic principles uh, of uh, a design system. Once you really grasp uh, these uh, um, these elements right here, more complicated design systems uh, are just uh, using this concept over and over and over again on multiple uh, components, multiple textiles, multiple color styles, but the basic principle is uh, exactly this. So if I go ahead over here, for example, and I look at Inizio, you can see that uh, here, for example, I renamed uh, the color um, the, the the color layer to solid to primary slash solid and the naming conventions which uh, you want to adopt uh, in order to create these hierarchies are totally up to you what i like to do is uh, usually use a primary secondary and then uh, in this case also have uh, outlines so i'm using the actual weight of the outline as uh, a way to create this differentiation so as you can see over here, if I just move this a uh, little bit on the top uh, and uh, I select this document, you can see that basically <clears throat> I have uh, color styles for all sorts of different things from uh, the um, black colors to the borders to the fills and also of course the primary, secondary and uh, all of the different colors. But um, if you're curious and uh, about this, you can simply download the file and start having a look around at uh, how I organized it. And uh, by the way, I'm also going to leave in the description a uh, very long video series on uh, how to create these uh, design systems on, um, that I shot on YouTube some time ago. And it's a very extensive training, basically showing uh, what I just taught you just uh, in a more hands-on uh, um, and uh, live uh, video. So that's uh, almost two hours long. So it's uh, it's quite an advanced uh, and uh, detailed video. But if you're, if you're uh, keen to hear more about this, uh, I definitely recommend you to check it out. 
And uh, again, there is a, a live uh, a design system. Uh, it's a live and breathing document. So it's always going to be something that uh, you're going to expand. Uh, and uh, there aren't really uh, one single way that is uh, the uh, the way to go. You can all you can also freestyle with this with design system, and it really depends on the project you're working on. Uh, it really depends on variables. If you're working with teams uh, and uh, all sorts of different things may change the scope and the structure of the design system. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this video on design system. And uh, in the following ones, we're going to explore design systems from different angles in more depth.